Hi, my name is Emily Harding. I am the Deputy Director and Senior Fellow with the International Security Program here at CSIS. Our new report, Critical Technologies for Winning the Next War, explored the seven technologies that are going to be most important for the U.S. government to focus on in this new era of competition. There were three sprint technologies where the government needs to take the lead and push hard in making advancements for these technologies. Those are bioengineering, secure redundant communications networks, and quantum computing. We also looked at four technologies that are follow technologies, where the government can follow the lead of the private sector. Those four technologies are space-based sensing and other technologies, high-performance batteries, AIML, and robotics. To get to this list of technologies, first we evaluated war in the future. We did an examination of what war in the future might look like, both in a hot blast scenario and in a slow smolder. Next, we interviewed a wide variety of experts on what technologies were out on the horizon and could actually make a difference. It's clear that China and other US adversaries are investing in critical technologies, particularly ones like bioengineering and AI ML. It's vitally important that the US attempt to also stay ahead with these technologies, and especially to invest alongside the private sector in making advancements in these critical areas. While each one of these technologies is powerful by itself, We've seen that when they are paired together, they can be even more powerful and impactful. For the Sprint technologies, it's important that the government signal demand, and in part they can do that by purchasing subcomponents of the technologies themselves. One example is quantum computing. We may be a decade out from an actual workable capability there, but the government can signal right now long-term investment in that space by buying the subcomponents, especially when it comes to areas like quantum sensing. For the follow technologies, the government should think separately about the 80% solution and the 100% solution. In some cases, the 100% solution is the only solution that will do. The government needs the bespoke, specific solution that it asks for. However, some of the time, the 80% solution will do. Commercial satellite providers can provide the government excellent resolution at half the cost for key targets like military bases around the world. We also recommend significant changes in government practices surrounding acquiring technology. The government needs to shift how it thinks about risk. There's the risk of doing something, but also the risk of not doing something. And the real question is, can we afford to let our adversaries make the gains in these technologies that we are not making? We also talk in the report about creating technology-focused career paths for uniformed personnel and especially for contracting officers. Those officers may need additional training in how they think about acquiring technologies. We're also launching a new microsite called TechRex. CSIS has a long and excellent track record of publishing policy recommendations on new technologies. This microsite will bring all those recommendations into one place as a one-stop shop for policymakers who are looking for recommendations on how to improve things like AIML or quantum computing or a lot of the technologies we reference in this report. TechRex will be updated constantly with new findings, but right now it includes findings from this report on the critical technologies for winning the next war, also our Oscar report, and a report from a couple years ago on the intelligence edge. All of those are in one place for policymakers to find easily. To read our full report and access our new microsite TechRex, please visit CSIS.org.